Hi again, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Hand Whisperer and Lesson 31 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam course. In this lesson, we go over the T9A questions, which covers antennas. The questions in the T9A section go over vertical and horizontal antennas, the concept of gain, common portable and mobile antennas, and relationships between antenna length and frequency. All right, let's get going. What is a beam antenna? Well, the answer you're looking for is an antenna that concentrates signals in one direction. So th this makes a beam antenna a type of directional antenna. Now, what makes a beam antenna a directional antenna is that it needs to have at least two elements. And what an element is is a conductor which is tuned or cut to a specific frequency, so it resonates at a certain frequency. Some, have, some beam antennas have many elements, but it needs to at least have two to give it its directional capability. Now, one element is the driven element. And this is the one that's actually connected to your radio. And what actually has power going through it if you're transmitting. Now the other is called a parasitic element or if there's more than one there's parasitic elements which are used to focus the signals in one direction. So the driven element produces the signal and the parasitic element act as kind of a, a lens that focuses those signals in one direction. And if you know what a rooftop TV antenna looks like that's a type of beam antenna. Which of the following is true regarding vertical antennas? Well, the answer you're looking for is the electric field is perpendicular to the Earth, which means it's at a 90 degree angle to the Earth. And this is sort of tricky, and I'm going to try to give you a little background on this so you can help, help you remember this question. Now, you have to remember that radio waves are electromagnetic waves, and electromagnetic waves have two components, electric fields and magnetic fields. Now, the electric field, or E field, is the primary field concerned with orientation of antennas. Now, the E field will have the same orientation as the antenna's polarization. And since a vertical antenna has a vertical orientation or polarization, the E field will be vertical as well, making it perpendicular to the Earth. Now, th this is not necessarily the case with the magnetic field, but hopefully this explanation of the E field or electric field will help you remember the answer to this question. Which of the following describes a simple dipole mounted so the conductor is parallel to the Earth's surface? Well, the answer you're looking for is a horizontally polarized antenna. And here's why. You have to know that a dipole antenna is a simple wire antenna, which is usually about a half wavelength long. And it is divided into two equal lengths, which is connected by a feed point at the center. So your coax feeds it at the center of the antenna. Now, if the antenna conductor, or the wire, is parallel to the Earth's surface, then the antenna is horizontally polarized. So if you know that in a dipole antenna is a simple wire antenna, and if that wire is horizontal to the Earth's surface, then it is horizontally polarized. What is the disadvantage of the rubber duck antenna supplied with most handheld radio transceivers? Well, the answer is it does not transmit or receive as effectively as a full-sized antenna. And the way they wanted you to come to this answer is that the general rule with antennas is the longer the better as far as producing and, and receiving a signal, and that's within reason. A rubber duck antennas are junk for anything other than short distance communications. So the point of this question is full-size antennas work better than shortened antennas. How would you change a dipole antenna to make it resonant on a higher frequency? Well, the answer is to shorten it, and this makes sense, and here's why. Ideally, a dipole is one half of the wavelength you are transmitting at. So if you're transmitting on the 80 meter band, your dipole length will probably, probably be about 40 meters. Now, if you go to a higher frequency, like 20 or 10 meters, you are working with a shorter wavelength. And therefore, for the dipole to resonate correctly, you need to shorten it to match the higher frequency. So if you're changed to a 20 meter band, you're going to want a 10 meter long dipole. What type of antennas are the quad, yagi, and dish? Well, quad, yagi, and dish antennas are all directional antennas. They all focus radio waves in one direction, which makes them directional. What is a good reason not to use a rubber duck antenna inside your car? Well, the answer they're looking for in the exam is signals can be significantly weaker than when it is outside of your vehicle. So unless you own a vintage East German car made out of plywood, chances are your car's body is made of metal. And this metal blocks a lot of the signals if your antenna is inside of it. And the rubber duck is bad, but any antenna is going to block a lot of the signal. So if you get a mobile antenna and mount it outside the car, your, your signal will be as strong as it possibly can. What is the approximate length in inches of a quarter wavelength vertical antenna for 146 megahertz? Well, first of all, just for your information, for vertical antennas, a quarter wavelength is considered to be a full-size antenna. Now, the formula you're going to need to memorize is length in inches is equal to 12 times 234 divided by frequency megahertz. So if you substitute in the frequency, 
Length in inches is equal to 12 times 234 divided by 146, which is equal to 19.233, or roughly 19 inches, and the answer on the exam is 19 inches. What is the approximate length in inches of a 6 meter, 1 half wavelength wire dipole antenna? All right, for dipole antennas, 1 half wavelength is considered to be full size, and there's a slightly different formula to figure it out. You have to know, also know that the 6 meter band runs from 50 to 54 megahertz, which we'll use 52 for this formula just because it's in the middle. The formula you need to know is that length in inches is equal to 12 times 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz, which, if you plug in the numbers, comes out to 108 inches. The closest answer on the exam is 112 inches, which fits within the 6 meter band. In which direction is the radiation strongest from a half wave dipole antenna in free space? All right, the answer is broadside to the antenna. And I don't like the way this answer is phrased, but it's in fact true. If you were able to see the radiation pattern coming off of the dipole, it looks like a figure eight perpendicular to the wires. So the wires cutting the figure eight in half right at the middle. Now, if you were at one end of the wire dipole and you were looking straight down the wire, the radiation is strongest to the right and left of the wire, which is broadside to the antenna. What is meant by the gain of an antenna? Well, what is meant by the gain of antenna is the increase in signal strength in a specified direction when compared to a reference antenna. So if you can remember gain from a previous lesson, it's pretty much the same thing. You take a reference antenna and measure the signal strength of a signal. And then you take another antenna and measure the same signal. You plug those, in, those two numbers into the gain formula and you get the gain of the second antenna in decibels. What is the reason to use a properly mounted 5 8 wavelength antenna for VHF or UHF mobile service? The answer is it offers a low angle, lower angle of radiation and more gain than a quarter wavelength antenna and usually provides improved coverage. So what you need, this is something you should just know, is memorize, is that a 5 8 wavelength antenna for VHF and UHF works better than a quarter wavelength. And the reason is different wave antennas have different characteristics depending on the frequencies. For VHF and UHF, a 5 8 wavelength produces a lower angle of radiation. And since UHF and VHF are line of sight frequencies, this low angle of radiation keeps the majority of the signal closer to the earth and thus gives you a little bit better, more power in the right direction, essentially. It also receives signals better from this direction as well. So what is the reason to use a properly mounted 5 8 wavelength antenna for VHF and UHF mobile? It offers a lower angle of radiation and more gain than a quarter wavelength antenna and usually provides improved coverage. Why are VHF or UHF mobile antennas often mounted in the center of the vehicle roof? Now the answer is a roof mounted antenna normally provides the most uniform radiation pattern. Now this question on the exam you got to be very careful with because the other possible answers aren't necessarily completely wrong. This is a best answer type question. The reasoning behind it is that the center of the roof offers a relatively uniform amount of metal on all sides of the antenna and thus the radiation pattern is the most uniform. And this will give you the best 360 degree coverage around the antenna. So the best answer for why are VHF or UHF mobile antennas often mounted in the center of the vehicle roof is a roof mounted antenna normally provides the most uniform radiation pattern. Which of the following terms describes a type of loading when referring to an antenna? The answer is inserting an inductor in the radiating portion of the antenna to make it electrically longer. Not exactly sure how that's a term, but it really doesn't matter right now. All right, so this question is dealing with electronic principles, and if you can remember that, you'll be able to s knock out at least two of the other questions. So there are several types of loads, and for this one, it's adding an inductor to the antenna to make it electrically longer. Now, we talked about dummy loads, and these consist of a resistor and a heat sink. Remember, a dummy load is not really an antenna. It's kind of a fake antenna. So for this question, inserting an inductor into the radiating or un, in the radiating portion of the antenna to make it electrically longer is a type of loading. And that was it for the T9A review, and now it's time for a quiz. So take out a pencil and paper, number 1 through 14 this time, and when you're done with the, the quiz, you can go to hamwhisper.com and check your answers there. You can find them under the exam answers page under the T9A section. I'm going to go through the questions kind of quick, so if you need more time, just pause the video. Let's start with the quiz. Question 1. What is a beam antenna? A. An antenna built from aluminum I-beams. B. An omnidirectional antenna invented by Clarence Beam. C. An antenna that concentrates signals in one direction. Or D. An antenna that reverses the phase of received signals. Question 2. 
Which of the following is true regarding vertical antennas? A. The magnetic field is perpendicular to the Earth. B. The electric field is perpendicular to the Earth. C. The phase is inverted. Or D. The phase is reversed. Question 3. Which of the following describes a simple dipole mounted so the conductor is parallel to the Earth's surface? A. A ground wave antenna. B. A horizontally polarized antenna. C. A rhombic antenna. Or D. A vertically polarized antenna. Question 4. What is the disadvantage of the rubber duck antenna supplied with most handheld radio transceivers? A. It does not transmit or receive as effectively as a full-size antenna. B. It transmits a circularly polarized signal. C. If the rubber end cap is lost, it will unravel very quickly. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 5. How would you change a dipole antenna to make it resonant on a higher frequency? A. Lengthen it. B. Insert coils in series with radiating wires. C. Shorten it. Or D. Add capacity hats to the ends of the radiating wires. Question 6. What type of antennas are the quad, yagi, and dish? A. Non-resonant antennas. B. Loop antennas. C. Directional antennas. Or D. Isotropic antennas. Question 7. What is a good reason not to use a rubber duck antenna inside your car? A. Signals can be significantly weaker than when it is outside the vehicle. B. It might cause your radio to overheat. C. The SWR might decrease decreasing the signal strength. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 8. What is the approximate length in inches of a quarter wavelength vertical antenna for 146 MHz? A. 112. B. 50. C. 19. Or D. 12. Question 9. What is the approximate length in inches of a 6 meter, 1 half wavelength wire dipole antenna? A. 6. B. 50. C. 112. Or D. 236. Question 10. In which direction is the radiation strongest from a half wave dipole antenna in free space? A. Equally in all directions. B. Off the ends of the antenna. C. Broadside to the antenna. Or D. In the direction of the feed line. Question 11. What is meant by the gain of an antenna? A. The additional power that is added to the transmitter power. B. The additional power that is lost in the antenna when transmitting on a higher frequency. C. The increase in signal strength in a specified direction when compared to a reference antenna. Or D. The increase in impedance on receive or transmit compared to a reference antenna. Question 12. What is the reason to use a properly mounted 5 8 wavelength antenna for VHF or UHF mobile service? A. It offers a lower angle of radiation and more gain than a quarter wavelength antenna and usually provides improved coverage. B. It features a very high angle of radiation and is better for communicating via a repeater. C. The 5 8 wavelength antenna completely eliminates distortion caused by reflected signals. Or D, the 5 8 wavelength antenna offers a 10 times power gain over a quarter wavelength design. Question 13. Why are VHF or UHF mobile antennas often mounted in the center of the vehicle roof? A, roof mounts have the lowest possible SWR of any mounting configuration. B, only roof mounting can guarantee a vertically polarized signal. C, a roof mounted antenna normally provides the most uniform radiation pattern or D, roof-mounted antennas are always the easiest to install. And question 14. Which of the following terms describes the type of loading when referring to an antenna? A, inserting an inductor in the radiating portion of the antenna to make it electrically longer. B, inserting a resistor in the radiating portion of the antenna to make it resonant. C, installing a spring at the base of the antenna to absorb the effects of collisions with other objects or D, making the antenna heavier so it will resist wind effects when in motion. And that's it for the T9A section and lesson 31. Now that you're done with the quiz, stop by handwhisper.com and check your answers. You'll find it under the T9A link under the exam answers page. And until next time in lesson 32, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.